unsettled souls, and no, I haven't lost my mind. I'm trying to sync two cameras at once here. Uh, Christelle is helping on this one. And unfortunately, Google has done this again. But welcome to the Prec News. I've got all kinds of news for you today. I also, uh, I have to say, how many of you have uh, followed the Halloween shows and the April Fool's shows and et cetera, et cetera? If you have, then what you have likely noticed is um, there's this ridiculous character that I created called Ard Marquise. And he comes out on Halloween and various uh, April Fool's Day. It's a joke. Well, wouldn't you know, by dumb luck, Ard Martiz actually has managed to <laughs> made his second correct prediction. We'll get to that at the end of the show. We'll have time for a little bit of silliness. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have silliness to lead off with. Kurt Nemo, Prison Planet. Arizona readies bill to outlaw citizens recording cops on private property. Do you get this? And uh, those of you who are on low depth, those of you that see me with the lower third, let me know uh, how the uh, how the audio is on this because it's a new mic. It's supposed to be a new professional mic, and everybody said it sounds fuzzy, which is great because my other one costs like five dollars, and it always works. So let me know if this works. The Arizona Senate is posed to pass a bill that will outlaw citizens from taking video of police even on their own private property. It is unlawful for a person to knowingly make a video recording of law enforcement activity, SB 1054 reads. If the person making the video recording does not have the permission of a law enforcement officer and is within 20 feet of where the law enforcement activity is occurring, in other words, they can come into your house, film whatever part of the arrest that they choose to film. However, you are not allowed to film in your own house if they if you don't meet a certain criteria. The ban also states that an individual may not record police on their private property or in their homes unless they are 20 feet away from police or from an adjacent room. And if a police officer determines the individual is, quote, interfering in the law enforcement activity, which we have seen them use for no reason at all repeatedly, then it's safe to be in the area. Now, I want to give a shout out here because I'm in a really bad mood just to reading this. I'm in a good mood, you could tell when I started. And I'm laughing a little bit for those of you that watch all the time. And that's why you subscribe. So you get these funny stories. Those of you that don't subscribe, you'll love it. Christelle has not been in the studio and the camera hasn't worked. And everybody thinks that I've lost my mind. And now she's here. And I was ready to just not mention it because I was like, oh, well, it's going to work. No, it still doesn't work. So it wasn't me, listeners. It wasn't me. Uh, police routinely oppose citizens recording their activity, and the proposed legislation will provide them with a legal loophole to shut down all video recording. Um, thankfully, I live in Canton, Ohio. I have recorded the cops a couple of times, and they have always been remarkable about it. I also want to give a shout out to the State Highway Patrol in Akron, which helped my friend Albino when he was stranded in Akron. In Pennsylvania, oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't Akron, that was Pennsylvania, State Highway Patrol. I think his name was Larry. Way to go. But yeah, this particular here, this Arizona issue, is an absolute nightmare. The Arizona law is a response to numerous videos that have shown police abuse. And in a few instances, individual police officers have faced persecution for violating the rights of citizens as a result of video recordings. The government has taken a keen interest in preventing this sort of evidence. In other words, the police are being proved wrong. So the way around it isn't to reform the actions of the police. No, 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 no. See, that would make sense. We can't possibly do that. We are going to change the rights of the police officers so that they can film you at will. But, you know, maybe there, or I forgot to turn my camera on while I was beating his head in with my stick. That's a great idea. Listen to this. This is from John W. Whitehead. God bless John W. Whitehead. 
If government officials can find and arrest you for growing vegetables in your front yard, praying with friends in your living room, installing solar panels on your roof, and raising chickens in your backyard, which we've covered most of those here, you're no longer the owner of your property. If school officials can punish your children for what they do or say while at home or in daycare, which, care which they do, then your children are not your own. They are the property of the state. Um, that says it all, friends. Uh, moving on, horrible. Don't worry about it, Christelle. Just see if you can get it to work. At least now you know what the glitch is. Um, PJmedia.com. Rand Paul asks voters, have any of you ever worked for a poor person? Now, let me say before I get people saying you a traitor. If Rand is still in the primary. I am going to vote for Rand. Okay, so please, please put me in what Glenn Beck calls the safety tree for a minute. I'm going to vote for Rand, so leave me alone. The reason that Rand is not where Trump is is because Rand focused on Planned Parenthood, which I'm not saying was bad, but he focused on Planned Parenthood instead of focusing on the economy instead of focusing on immigration, instead of focusing on taxes. These are all Rand Paul issues. That's why he and Cruz were leading going into this. Rand decided to go ahead and focus on other things that didn't affect those of us who were not aborted. What I'm saying is Planned Parenthood is not going to get you elected or unelected. I hate to be the one to tell you that. It's simply not going to happen. No matter which side of the debate you're on, I think most people agree on that. So he was talking about that. Trump started talking about the economy, and guess what? Bam! Trump leaves. Trump started talking about immigration. Rand is actually the person who would be best for the nation here, quite, quite clearly. Um... Instead, I don't know what he's been doing, but now he quotes Rush Limbaugh. And I used to drive cab. I used to listen to radio all the time. Have you ever worked for a poor person? That's a stupid question because some people have. Who? Well, um, I don't. I make very little money. I mean, I'm not. I'm not poor. I would consider myself low middle class, uh, high end poor. I don't know how you want to look at it. Um, I can tell you this. I've hired people. I'm a DJ. So I know what's a DJ name. There you go. I'm a DJ. Um, I've hired people to work on a house, sometimes for quite a bit of money. When my parents died, I inherited a small sum of money. And I used that small sum of money to go ahead and purchase a couple of properties that I have fixed up as I have been able to afford to do so. Guess who hired them? Me. Okay, so it's not in my, my point is, I know what he means, a well-paying job that pays all the time. My point is bigger than it. I understand. I was being facetious, forgive me. But the best you can do is to quote Rush Limbaugh from a decade ago. Rand Paul is the leader of good ideas in this race. And he's crashing Unfortunately, everything else he says in here is is absolutely every reason that I'm going to vote for him. He has just run a terrible campaign. I heard that Jesse Benton was involved. Uh, many of us believe that uh, Ron Paul would have done a lot better if Jesse Benton had never been there. And uh, that's proving true here, too. I would like to know to what degree uh, uh, Benton is involved in this because, oh, man. Republican presidential candidate Rand Paul framed the 2016 election as a choice between higher taxes to pay for more free stuff from the federal government or lower taxes to fund a smaller government. And he's right, 100% right. Again, I am attacking his campaign, not him. Drawing a contrast between his campaign, which has done horrible, and Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders, who should be doing horrible, Paul asked voters if they have ever worked for a poor person rather than a company. Yes, I can name you a few that have. 
However, how do we get to a lower taxes in this country? You have to say you don't want everything for free and you don't want an enormous government if you are going to have lower taxes. He is correct. If you don't, what will you have? Your government will continue to grow and businesses would continue to leave. And it's going to be a problem. It's already beginning to be a problem, Paul said during a town hall in New Hampshire, and which is true. However, I am also, while very libertarian myself, and I'm for those of you that don't know, Gary Johnson might be running again, which is wonderful news because if Trump doesn't get it, or Rand doesn't get it, I'm probably voting for Gary Johnson if that happens. I'm letting you know right now. Um, I like Trump's idea. We will tax the living hell out of you when you bring stuff back in if you leave our country for another. I'm completely in favor of it. Call me a nationalist if you want, that's fine. I'm completely in favor of that. So that's the way around what Rand is saying here. But the rest of what he is saying is absolutely true. And again, I am going to vote for the man if he's still in it. But what happens if we get both sides going back and forth and they will pitch to you class warfare? That means the poor versus rich. Bernie Sanders will tell you that we must tax those evil corporations because they're getting rich and they're getting all of the money. But have you ever worked for a poor person? The thing is, we're on the same side. If someone owns your company and you're the 10,000th in line, you make money when the company makes money. If the company is no longer here, then you don't have a job. Well, Rand, that is your job to keep them here. Okay, I'm libertarian nationally. I am not libertarian globally. And the reason I am not is because it's not an even playing field financially. So libertarianism doesn't work on global scale in terms of economy when you're not dealing with an even playing field. It, it works within a country. Um, Paul, an orthodontologist, urge Americans to consider everyone is interconnected and whether or not something that helps the business owner also helps the individual and employee. Our taxes are chasing businesses away. He is right on that in every way. Our regulations are chasing businesses away. It's also stopping people from opening businesses, which is even worse. He should be mentioning that. And it's made worse by the fact that we have allowed our government to operate by executive fiat. That means writing anything they want. The president is just doing whatever he wants, Paul said, citing Burger King moving to Canada to pay less in corporate taxes. And again, Trump has the good idea to keep that from happening as well. But uh, I, I like Rand over Trump, but Rand, you, you've got to be the worst communicator in the several ways. And why am I saying that? Because it's not just me saying that. Yahoo.com, Rand Paul, and Carly Farina cut from main GOP debate lineup. Didn't I just say in a rather recent show, didn't I not just allude to the fact of poor David Bowie, rest in peace, did I not just allude to the fact that Rand needed to step it up or he was going to give up. Good morning, Iowa, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul and former technology executive Carly Ferriona, Ferriona who just, Ferriona, who just got put onto the main stage by popular vote, now will not appear on the primetime debate stage when the Republican Party's 2016 presidential class faces off later this week in South Carolina. Debate host Fox Business announced debate lineup Monday evening, dealing a blow to both candidates three weeks before Iowa's leadoff presidential caucuses. Just seven candidates, the smallest Republican group so far, will be featured in Thursday's 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time main event. It will be Trump center stage. He'll be joined by Texas uh, Senator Ted Cruz, Rubio, Carson, Bush, Christy, yeah. Bush, yeah, for that matter, John Kasich, yeah. 
Ben Carson mostly, yeah. Uh, Paul and Ferrarina were united to participate and were invited to participate in the undercard debate. <coughs> Paul said he would skip the uh, second face, second tier face off. An artificial designation as being in the second tier is something that we can't accept. So what are we looking at here? As uh, Rand should have listened to the correct views and uh, maybe gotten rid of Jesse Benton, maybe hired me. Um, because Rand is right on taxes to a better degree than Trump is. Trump does a better job explaining it. So what are we going to do? Let's face it. Rand is done. Okay. Can we just face that? I don't like it either. So what are we going to do? We can, uh, we can vote Gary Johnson or McAfee. And my guess is it will be one of those two that get the libertarian election. It'll be Johnson or McAfee. Johnson did not do as good as we hoped that he would, but he uh, he did well. In some ways, there were instances where we we just don't know how it is, but we know that Johnson was cheated. It was, you can look up, you can look up it's put it in any search engine. Ten percent Gary Johnson, Ohio, for the last election, presidential election. What did we see? A little over one percent, I think, a little under one percent in Ohio. You don't lose nine percentage points in four days in the state, so something happened. But having said that, it wasn't like he was going to be president. But something didn't add up there. But it's going to be Gary Johnson, or it's going to be McAfee that gets the election. So we've got that as an option, and you're Trump. I like Trump. I don't love Trump. I like Trump. If it looks like we're going to have Clinton or Sanders, I'm going to vote for Trump because I don't believe in voting for the lesser of two evils, but I don't believe that Donald Trump is evil. I don't think he's as good as Rand Paul. And I don't think he's as good as Gary Johnson, even though he, Gary Johnson could not be more wrong on immigration. Other than that, Johnson over Trump. However, that's if it comes down between Sanders or Clinton, Mr. Tax or Mrs. Witch, then you've got to pick Trump. You've simply got to pick Trump. Um, does he have faults? Yes, he does. But he's not evil. Um, Sanders is going to bankrupt the nation, and Hillary is just evil. If you don't believe me, <coughs> I'm dying here. I'm so thirsty. Look up um, the correct views. Bernie Sanders questions uh, no Sanders supporter can answer. So basically, that's where it looks like it's going because... Let's face it, Rand is done. I'm sorry, that's your Rand update, and I'm not happy about it either. This is uh, the Daily Sheeple. Something big is coming. The banks have never done this before. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I'm sitting there like licking my lips. They probably think I'm trying to imitate a goat. Nah. Um, financial markets across the world took a crushing blow last week as exuberant investors from Asia to the United States came to the realization that the economy may be doing may not be doing as well as the governments want us to believe. Well I bet that is quite a crushing blow indeed. How many times have you heard me say, I don't care if you have to buy the tiniest bit in the whole world. The tiniest little nippy bit. Make sure that you get yourself silver, gold. Uh, I don't buy copper because I'm allergic to it, but you get the point. They aren't alone, according to insiders. Um, there's a lot of people saying there's something big in the uh, high net investors are positioning themselves for the physical precious metals. That is not the paper gold, but the gold that you actually buy. You can buy gold without your name on it and uh, look up how to live without banks. 
and uh, look it up, friends. It, it tells you how to buy gold <laughs> and silver without your name even being associated with it. it. says you aren't alone. According to insiders like First Mining Finance, as you see on back cam, Mineral Bank founder Keith Newmeyer and silver investor David Morgan in an unprecedented major move of financial institutions operating in the shadows are reportedly gobbling up silver and gold coins in small bullion bars at such extreme levels that mints in Australia, Canada, and the U.S. are able to keep up with demand. Unable to keep up with demand. You can buy tiny, tiny bits. As a matter of fact, Who's still listening? Anybody still listening? If you're still listening, go ahead and leave me a message because guess what? I'm giving away a small chunk of silver to whoever wins my uh, little contest. Look up Dubs Capital Year. It's the last posting up there. Uh, let, let me know at the beginning, part one, which of the 12 stories you think is the dumbest. And I'm going to give you a little piece of silver if you win. And you don't have to win. Whoever gets the most votes doesn't win. Everybody that votes gets a pick and then I pick it randomly <laughs> even if your pick for Dove's cap of the year doesn't win being that gold and silver are often referred to as safe haven assets and those of us who have bought it and lost money on it people have laughed at one can conclude with some certainty that someone somewhere is anticipating a serious calamity and the fact that they are now essentially making these purchases in secret adds further credence to the notion that they know something that you don't or as uh, George Carlin said, um, no, it's a big club and you're not in it. Um, I think a small club and you're not in it. Either way, you're not in it. it says we've been we've seen throughout history and most recently in Greece, Zimbabwe, and Argentina, when panic and crisis of the order of the day, physical assets like gold and silver become the currency of the masses. Now you're waiting for me to pitch you a gold company, right? Well, I'm not going to. And they don't sponsor me. I'm not going to sponsor them. I'm not even going to tell you who I buy from. If I buy. If I bought the Lyle. Why? Because they don't pay me anything. I do want to give a shout out, though, to people that have always helped me and I have always helped them. And that would be change transportation. So if you live within about a 50-mile radius of downtown Canton, make sure you call change transportation. Let them know how much you pay for a ride. And they will definitely match and or beat it. Uh, listen to this. Breitbart.com. Now... Look at this beautiful girl. If you have, do you have a daughter or do you have even a son that, you know, might be a little bit bent? Make sure they watch this because I'm about to make fun of the idiocy of this girl because what she did is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. Was I this stupid as a kid? Yes. Was I this stupid? No. Um, she joined ISIS and they killed her. Now, if you are dumb enough to join ISIS, you could argue, okay, but the trouble is, I mean, this all, we're not going to joke about someone dying, which is what happened. She died. So, I mean, bring your sons, your daughters into the room. Hit share on this. This is important because this, this sucks, okay? Samra Kisanovic was used as a sex slave by the Islamic State before being killed while trying to flee, it was alleged. So she went to help them. She believed they were some noble, uh, they were on some noble mission, right? This is what she got. The girl, along with 15-year-old Sabrina Silamalvik, produced horrified headlines around the world in 2014. Two beautiful teenagers of Bosnian extraction who ran away from home in Austria to join the Islamic State. Don't look for us. We will serve Allah and we will die for him, they wrote in a farewell note to their, to their parents. What they did was sign themselves up for abuse and um, basically treated like chattel. They became poster pimps for the jihad, donning burqas and brandishing rifles to pose with ISIS fighters. They took to social media to advertise the joys of life in the Islamic State. 
with Sabina declaring, here I am really, here I can really be free. I can practice my religion. I couldn't do that in Vienna, she claimed, to have taken an ISIS soldier as a husband. She was 15 years old. And again, no, I wasn't that stupid at 15. Uh, Samra, two years older, also supposedly took jihadi husband, a jihadi husband, but apparently her domestic bliss in the terror state was short-lived. Reports of her disillusionment and death began circulating in early 2015. At first, she was thought to have died on the battlefield, a fate that apparently befell the younger Sabina, but soon it was said that she was caught while attempting to flee the ISIS capital of Raqqa and beaten to death. The full story of Samra Kisonovic's fate has been fully supplied by a Tunisian woman who claims to have lived with the girls in Raqqa. So basically, uh, they know that she was dead. She tried to get away after repeated rapes, it seems. And that's ISIS, okay? That's, we won't even say Islam at that point. That's ISIS. You ran away to join ISIS! And friends, that brings us to the Dumni of the day, where none of you expected it to be the case. Now, for those of you that don't know, Arg Mortis is a fictional character that I made up to be on the correct views. And I almost didn't include him as a guest, so to speak. Because I was under the impression that nobody would ever believe that such a stupid character could possibly exist. And then guess what? Guess what happened? Just guess. First of all, he was right on his prediction regarding pumpkins. Ard Mortis, the fictional character that I thought was too stupid to put on the show, predicted that the United Nations were going to call pumpkins a threat to the environment. That happened, and we covered it. Well, now everyone knows that Arg Mortis is known, very much so, for knives. Waving knives in front of the camera. Well, wouldn't you know that some idiot has managed to do the same thing. So kill the lights here while we bring Arg in. The fictional character that I made, Arg Mortis, wishes very much to come on here and tell you that for the second time since Halloween, he is right. <laughs> you guys didn't believe me, did you? I told you. I told you they were going to call pumpkins the threat to go to go on the warming, and you didn't believe me. Sam said that I shouldn't be a character because nobody was going to believe that anybody could be that stupid. But listen to first of all, look at this. You have no respect. You didn't. I put you in that from Amazon. I didn't respect you. I didn't respect you. There you got some idiot swinging knives in front of the camera. Saying he's gonna castrate Donald Trump. Then the FBI came to see him. Oh yeah. Oh, so you want a coffee, Hogwarts? The FBI are gonna put a baton up your ass. That's what's gonna happen. Paul Joseph Fox in prison for it. A crazed Muslim and Hillary Clinton supporter uh, responded to Donald Trump's controversial comments on immigration. By threatening to circumcise Republican threat runner Donald Trump. Oh, the individual or YouTube channel is entitled Ibalba. What the hell does that even mean? Ibalba. Um, you, you, I think you might get visited. Look, uh, I'm going to get visited by the FBI because I'm holding up. Because I'm holding up. Why am I even on this shit? <laughs> yeah, okay. What does Ibalba even mean? He appears in a video manically waving knives around while vowing to cut off Trump's penis. 
I wave knives around. I wave them around in my other video. You can see it. You can see it on Halloween. You can see it on the look up Halloween Correct Views 2015. I was waving knives. But no, I'm going to use scissors. I use scissors before this son of a bitch steals my act. Oh, I'm going to kill him. Donald Trump says, oh, no, I said I'm going to kill him. The FBI are going to come. Donald Trump says today on the news in front of millions of people that Donald Trump says they are going to ban Muslims from coming to America, states the man. Well, you know what? Louis Farrakhan also agrees. Well, you're going to castrate him, too. Uh, he accuses Trump of no respect for manners, and the man screams, I am Muslim, before calling Trump's mother and father a pussy. Uh, that's what happens if you use knives and you swing around guys. You know? Your entire family are all bastards. You are a bigot, and you don't even know the value in America. He then picks up two kitchen knives. Crystal, who swings kitchen knives? Only you are. Me! And he's going to swing kitchen knives. And then he gets visited by the FBI for doing it. <laughs> what do you think you are? The man continues. You banned Muslims. Fuck you, Donald Trump. The man repeats in threatening, remarking, I will circumcise you. I will cut off your dick. So since you, I don't want you stealing my act, I'll put the knife down. And I, how, about, how about if I use some nunchucks? I, oh, I can take your freaking... I'll get you with a lightsaber if I have to. Do you understand? If you steal my act, if you steal my act again, I swear, I'll get you with a lightsaber. How would you like it if that happened? Oh.